Six o'clock, here are headlines today. And England's Chief Medical Officer, Sir Chris Whitty, faces questions on lockdowns and government decision-making when he gives evidence to the COVID inquiry later. It follows evidence yesterday that scientists were not aware of Rishi Sunak's Eat Out to Help Out scheme until it was announced. Good morning. Could first-time buyers be given help onto the housing ladder? The big lenders are calling on the Chancellor to make buying a first home more affordable. Four men have been found guilty of murdering a 28-year-old woman in Liverpool. Ashley Dale was shot dead with a machine gun in her home in August last year after a long-running feud between her boyfriend, the intended target, and a gang of drug dealers in the city. It was one of several high-profile shootings on Merseyside last year. The UK Prime Minister has promised tax cuts to boost economic growth ahead of the Chancellor's autumn statement on Wednesday. Rishi Sunak said he was able to move on to the next phase of the government's economic plan after inflation fell to 4.6% last month. Reports of a malfunction on a Royal Navy nuclear submarine as it was diving have been confirmed to the BBC. The depth gauge, which shows how deep the vessel is in the water, failed on an unnamed Vanguard-class submarine, which carries the UK's Trident nuclear missiles. That incident happened more than a year ago, but a defence source declined to give further details. Now, the President and First Lady of South Korea have arrived in the UK for a three-day state visit. It is the first granted by King Charles to a world leader since his coronation. Uh, the main focus of their trip will be trade and technology, as well as discussions around the growing nuclear threat posed by North Korea. The Welsh Government wants to reform the school year, arguing that the traditional academic calendar takes children out of learning for too long. It wants to introduce shorter summer holidays and a longer break in the autumn. Teaching unions say they don't understand the need for the change, which could see schools closing for just four weeks during the summer. Tax on period pants could be abolished in the autumn statement. The Chancellor is expected to announce that the reusable underwear will no longer be subject to VAT from January. Uh, other products like pads and tampons have been exempt since 2021. An independent review into how Lancashire Police investigated the disappearance of Nicola Bully will be published this morning. Nicola's body, you'll remember, was found in January, three weeks after she fell into the river while walking her dog at St Michael's on Wire. Now, in the last few minutes, Shell Energy have been fined £1.4 million by the UK's communications regulator, Ofcom, for breaking consumer protection rules. Ben can explain. Morning, Ben. Yeah, morning. As well as gas and electricity, Shell Energy also provides phone and broadband services. And Ofcom, which regulates the communications industry, found the firm failed to meet rules designed to ensure customers get a fair deal for their phone and broadband services. The company's been fined nearly £1.5 million for failing to tell customers they were nearing the end of their contracts or letting them know what they could save by signing up to a new deal. Nearly 73,000 customers were affected by the failings over a period of just over two years. In some instances, the company failed to send end-of-contract notifications and annual best tariff notifications at all. Ofcom said that all the failings were caused by a combination of manual errors and failures of systems and processes at Shell Energy, going on to describe them as a serious breach of Ofcom rules. This morning's newspapers. We're going to start this morning with the Metro. Look at this. Rishi Sunak is cutting it fine, according to this paper, which notes that any tax changes in tomorrow's autumn statement come as the clock ticks down to a general election. The paper says the PM has distanced himself from his predecessor's tax cuts, insisting we will do this in a serious, responsible way. It's really hard to know from the papers this morning exactly what anybody's expecting in that autumn statement tomorrow, isn't it? Some of them say tax cuts All are nailed different. on. Yeah. Some are saying it's yeah. less likely. Uh, but Rishi Sunak also uh, on the eye as well this morning, looking 
back to the past his eat out to help out scheme during the second wave of covid uh, helped drive infections according to the paper which leads with testimony from the government's former chief scientific advisor sir patrick valance to the covid inquiry yesterday the paper says it's the first time that a senior government figure has confirmed that the scheme was a driver of coronavirus transmission Guardian carries a warning from the United Nations that the world is on track for a hellish three degrees of global warming by the end of the century. The report comes ahead of the COP28 climate summit that begins next week in the United Arab Emirates. And if you've just woken up and you're <laughs> feeling a little bit rough and you had a glass of wine last night, this might explain why, because the Times have got a story in the front page, it's in some of the papers as well, saying that scientists think they might now know why some people get a headache after only a small glass of wine. There's apparently some compound in red grapes specifically they found at the University of California that affects how the body metabolises the alcohol. This is very fascinating story, John. This will explain a yeah, lot. Yeah, it does. It might also be the quantity you drink. I think also, isn't there something about the, the more... Actually, it's nothing to do with whether the, the wine is cheaper or more expensive. Yeah, yeah. Very often, more expensive wines can give you a worse headache. And have higher quantity of this compound. Yeah. So, yeah, there we go. Now, look at uh, this morning's front pages for the first time this morning. The Mirror focuses on evidence given to that COVID inquiry that uh, Rishi Sunak was allegedly ready to let more people die rather than impose more curbs on freedoms ahead of the second wave of coronavirus. The Eye also reports on the evidence given by former Chief Scientific Advisor Sir Patrick Valance. The Metro looks ahead to the autumn statement. That's tomorrow now, in which Rishi Sunak is expected to offer tax cuts, which the paper says he hopes will help him win the next election. The Telegraph says Mr Sunak is pinning his electoral hopes on what it calls a Thatcher tax package. This is the front of the Express PM. We can and will cut taxes, it says, while the Mail celebrates what it calls the return of tax cutting Tories. The Times says the autumn statement will also include measures to get more people off sickness benefits by working from home. The Sun carries an exclusive interview with Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky. Their headline, Putin tried to kill me five times. The Guardian leads with a new warning from the UN that the world is heading for what it calls a hellish three degree rise in global temperatures. And the FT reports on a possible return for the chief executive of the technology firm OpenAI, who was unseated in what has been described as a botched boardroom coup. Now, if you want to see any of those front pages again, or indeed read the stories, then do scan the QR code on your screen.